It's a really polite way of saying we were here first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm originally from Saddle Lake, Alberta, and um, so I'm delighted to be here. My na Cree name, loosely translated into English, is Sky Dancer. And I won't go into the details of the philosophical discussion on that. But I just want to uh, say how delighted I am that you've all arrived to listen to all of us. So that's a little bit about myself. I went to residential school for seven years, and during that period of time, I had a two-year division because my parents, too, were residential school survivors. And so when I came out of that system, when I was 16 years old, I was homeless, depressed, and suicidal. And so I found a way to uh, express that, and I wrote poetry way back then. And um, um, I didn't know I was writing poetry because I never studied it. I didn't even know the word. I was just writing it. Many years later, a few years later, I gave some of that material to um, one of my um, white sister-in-laws. And I haven't seen it since because she moved out of the country and into the States, much to my dismay. It would have been lovely poetry. At 16, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, so after residential school, I, um, I was asked by an elder most recently to write a poem for him. After the poet, poet recently apologized to say, I'm sorry to the native public. He did not address re uh, the residential school events that occurred there, the sexual abuse, the genocide, and the cultural oppression and all of that. Uh, all of those details. I've written quite extensively about the material because I am a poet. And um, so what I would like to do is read um, the elder's story as he disclosed it to me after sitting down and having a really tearful um, a, a occasion. And he was telling me as his tears were rolling down his cheek, they fell to his chest. And he came to realize that to tears, the waters will lead us home. And so what I'd like to do is read you that poem. Is it up there? OK. The man bent his head, allowed the river to flow. And downhill streams, it slid to his cheeks and hugged his nose, where a transfixed boulder received the scent of rains and winds. The waterfall cascaded onto his chest, his heart the receiver. The Pope had just issued an, an apology. He did not address the sexual abuse, the cultural genocide experienced by so many. Where must the memories go? Overwhelmed, he blessed himself as the sage smoke rose. The sacred legends of Wisagetza, the trickster, Wachask, Muskrat, Muskrat, and Mizdagans, the Cayute, rose into memory. These tricksters, these healers, took him to the deep waters where the dreams of his soul waited. They tossed his infinite eye upward, inward, upside down, inside out. He became cross-eyed and saw his umbilical cord at the root of a tree. Saw his ancestors branch from the interior of the earth, the cosmic sky, the underbelly of the water that birthed him. 
He knew then the raindrops that slid into his heart would be the waters that would lead us home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I was given tobacco, and I'll take that to the lodge, um, because that's what you do when you present to a native elder, is that you, that's proper protocol. So, and I'm delighted that he's done this, because um, this is a sacred story and the um, transformation of which I wish, uh, wish to share with you about Wisagetza. Now the term Wisagetza is our trickster uh, figure. And Wisagetza, if you, if you look at the word, it's a long word, and there's three, three parts to it. The first part, called the prefix, we, 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 it means bitter. Not as an I'm bitter towards you, but in bitter medicine, like t taking Buckley's or picking roses off of rose uh, thorns. You know, they're really prickly, and uh, you can eat the rose bushes, but it, you pay the consequences, right? So it's about the bitterness of, of that healing, you know, the um, back and forth, the pro and con of taking that medicine. The second part of that is sage, which means love. And it's, it's a, 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 one little word can, I can write pages on one little word, sage tuin, which, which means it's got energy. The third part of that word is atak, which means soul, wind, and spirit. So the bitterness that I carry forth is a healing medicine to you, to me, filled with love, with consequences, into my own soul. And that's the real meaning of that trickster and how that legend honors myself and my people. I do apologize to my people who are Cree speakers if I've made a mess of this because I'm, I'm thinking alone and um, I'm, I look at words uh, uh, quite assertively, and sometimes I don't have that exchange with my elders. Anyhow, writing came to me in dreams when I was living in Kootenai Plains back in the uh, early 70s, where I met my partner of 48 years. And the dreams prophesied this journey that I would take as a poet, that I would travel far. And in one dream, I was living in the log shack that I grew up in. It was dilapidated. And there was cracks in the log shack, and I was filling it with papers and books. And one of my relatives with his long, beautiful braids came in and laughed at me. It took me another 20 years to figure that dream out, that one day that I would be sitting around writing and reading and something that I didn't grow up with, and um, that I would have to face the consequences of the details that I write in my poetry. I also went into ceremony with my elders, and my elders prophesied this journey that I would take as a writer, that I would travel far with huge wings, a strong back, and a long journey. Those were his three sentences. And he, would, he told me it will evolve. And that was the wonder of the vision quest I attended after um, he, he blessed me with, with, with uh, those were kind and rich words. We are, poetry, in my view, is a mystery. It reveals to us what we need to know not only about ourselves, I become a student to my own poetry. People will point out the things to me that I don't see and understand that I've written. After all, I'm a conduit. I just deliver the message. So your partner next to you is a mystery. We are a mystery to each other. It's fascinating to be a mystery and to love somebody so deeply like I have with my partner 48 years, and I go look at him and go, oh, I'm so delighted with that. So I'm so, so pleased 
to have shared this with you. And I also want to thank Richard and uh, Harpit for, for um, encouraging me and mentoring me on this TED Talks. I have never perceived myself to be standing here with such a wonderful audience and listeners. Thank you.